Manahu, I'm Carly Tex, Executive Director for the Advocates for Indigenous California Language Survival. I am Western Mono, a member of the North Fork Rancheria of Mono Indians and a descendant of the Dunlap Band of Mono Indians. I am a community linguist, Native American educator, and a basket weaver. I am pleased to talk about the advocates and how we adapted to meet the needs of our communities and continue our work through the pandemic. I'm Leanne Hinton, advisory member of the board of the Advocates for Indigenous California Language Survival and a trainer for the master apprentice program that we run. I'm also a professor emerita at UC Berkeley. It was my pleasure to co-teach a graduate course on Zoom in the fall semester of 2020 on language revitalization. One example of what we're talking about here of our gratitude to modern technology, which has helped to partly fill the holes that COVID-19 has created and even provided some benefits that make us think that we'll be carrying Zoom and related media with us into the future, even when the pandemic is long over. The Advocates for Indigenous California Language Survival, founded in 1992, is an all native run and led nonprofit organization. We have worked with California Indian communities and individuals for almost 30 years, providing programs and conferences to give people ways to learn and use their languages that long ago stopped being transmitted in the home and community. Our programs include the Master Apprentice Language Learning Program, where young people pair up with elders who know the language and are shown how to learn their language through intense immersion practices. We also run the Breath of Life Archival Institute for California Indian Languages, where people can come to the University of California's Berkeley campus to access the massive collections of materials on the languages of Native California and learn how to use them for their own learning and use. We also run the Languages Life Gathering, bringing together hundreds of language activists to share their language stories. More recently, we have developed the Family Language Program for families to bring the language back home again. Another recent addition is our quarterly spoken word event, celebrating each equinox and solstice with song, story, and poetry by people who wish to share their creativity in their languages. COVID-19, the worst pandemic in 100 years, upended all of these programs. 2020 started as usual with a master apprentice and family language training workshop in Reading in January and a few weeks later our annual face-to-face -face Eichel's board meeting in Williams in February. But by March we were all entering into a strange and lonely time, an era that's still upon us, sheltering in our homes, no longer able to attend public events and tribal gatherings, even family gatherings not able to go to movies or even restaurants nor even have a haircut, um, no longer even being able to hug our friends and relatives, visiting re rarely with masks on and holding our distance six feet away, please. When the shelter in place directives arrived, the advocates were in the middle of planning for the year's events, including Breath of Life, master apprentice workshops, and family language trainings, and the launch of a new event, Parallel Worlds, the Converging Paths of the Numu, Niwi, and Nisei in Payahunadu. The event was intended to be a showing of films at a historical theater in Lone Pine, featuring new short films on language revitalization and the Japanese American internment camp experience. Then a sh cultural sharing event at the Paiute Shoshone Cultural Center, followed by a panel of elders and activists discuss discussing their experiences with historical events at the Manzanar Historic Site and the convergence between the local Numu and Newi tribes and Japanese Americans. The event was to take place in May 2020. However, our planning committee decided that it would be best to cancel the live event due to the uneasiness around the pandemic and potential lack of attendees and our concern for the community's health. The pandemic forced us to adapt to an online platform, which resulted in a wonderful educational webinar that can be seen in full on the Eichel's YouTube channel 
and was featured in a full insert by News from Native California. The benefit of an online webinar was that we were able to share this story with a wider audience, reaching people from all across the state. And it was just the first of many adaptations for the Eichel's team in the year 2020. The Breath of Life Archival Institute takes a lot of planning. By early January, the call for applications goes out for participants and linguistic partners. The dorms at the library at the university are reserved and the librarians and archivists have formed their teams to get the materials ready. By the end of March, we had already invited guest instructors and completed the schedule. The pandemic was with us, but we kept hoping that it would be over by June, the month that we would be having the event. That hope sounds silly now. But by the time we had finished reviewing the applications, we knew we could not hold this conference. Even the campus itself was closing down. On April 20th, we sent out a letter to all the accepted applicants, informing them that we would not be able to hold the event after all, but telling them they were all accepted in advance to Breath of Life 2021. Of course, even holding an event on campus June 2021 is still in question now. But the letter went on to say that we would keep in contact and let everyone know about events we might do instead of the in-person Breath of Life. Once we decided we couldn't have an in-person Breath of Life and looked at the list of applicants who would be disappointed at the cancellation, Carly said, and the board agreed, well, we're going to have to give them something. And that's when Carly and the board went to work planning what we could do for the community researchers who love and depend on Breath of Life for materials access, learning, and networking with each other. Luckily, Cal has been working hard over the last decade to digitize their archival holdings with a special emphasis on the Native California materials. With the hardworking cooperation from the campus librarians and archivists, we were able to design something akin to a Breath of Life experience. At a normal Breath of Life, community researchers are given a crash course in linguistics with lectures on phonetics, phonology, morphology, and syntax, and are paired with a linguistic partner, usually a graduate student or professor who specializes in that language or language family to help them through the materials. The lectures were turned into pre-recorded videos and uploaded to our YouTube. Then we worked with the archivists at Cal to put the, put the archived digital materials into box where they could be shared with the community researchers. We then set up a Canvas account for each participant to access the course materials. And we also planned an orientation to familiarize the participants with what to expect. <clears throat> After months of planning, we launched the Virtual Breath of Life Institute or VBOLI for short. The six Saturdays of VBOLI events started on Zoom on July 11th. 14 language teams from Pitt River, Amamutsun, Chechenyo, Ramzin, Karuk, Lake Miwok, Lisenyo, Nisanan, Nomlaki, Paiute, Futwin, Tongva, and Washo signed on, each with a linguistic partner. Breakout rooms for each language were formed, the first week just to connect and from then on to actually get to work together. Each week had a theme. After the orientation week, one week each was devoted to sounds and writing, to word structure and to sentence structure. We took a flipped classroom approach and posted the filmed lectures about the subject on YouTube for people to watch before each Saturday event. The class time was for review and group work. As had happened in our in-person 2018 Breath of Life event, Kayla Carpenter from Hoopa and assistant professor at Humboldt State University gave the talks on phonetics and morphology. And Crystal Richardson from Karuk, uh, who's also a linguistics student at UC Davis, gave the talk on syntax. Kayla or Crystal began each of these weeks with a brief review of the topic and a question session. And then the groups went to their breakout sessions for the rest of the time, coming back together for the final few minutes and receiving their homework assignments for the week. 
The fifth week consisted of a panel with Dr. Stan Rodriguez of Kumeyaay and Lauren Bommelin of Talawa, speaking about their experiences with learning, teaching, and using their languages. And the last Saturday was the presentation of projects by the participants. Nothing can really replace in-person gatherings and the networking and bonding that comes out of it. Nevertheless, Zooming has its benefits too. One is that we were able to get some participants and linguistic partners who would not have been able to attend in person. Linguistic partners participated from as far away as the East Coast in one direction and Hawaii in the other direction. Because of this, some lucky teams were able to have linguistic partners that they had already worked with and who were friends and who really know a great deal about their respective languages. All in all, the event was positive and productive. One major benefit pointed out by Leland Kinter, who's Patwin um, with the Ochadihi, is that the virtual breath of life was a great lesson in how to teach languages online. Language teachers whose teaching stopped at stay-at-home orders now feel increased confidence that they could start classes again, this time virtually. Some teams expressed interest in continuing to teach classes online after the Institute was over. Now for ICLES, another program that was going downhill during the COVID crisis was the Master Apprentice Language Learning Program. After our initial training sessions in January and February, we had canceled all upcoming um, in-person trainings and many of our language teams were not getting together because of the stay at home orders. We decided to start holding some Zoom training to stay in touch with the teams and help the teams stay in touch with each other. Luckily, Carly and I had taken part in a wonderful online institute led by Zalmai Zahir who's developed a great set of language learning strategies. Carly and another board member, Matthew Vistuto, uh, who's uh, too much, co-instructed at that institute and I participated as an observer. We decided to use these methods for Zoom mini trainings with our master apprentice team. So thanks to Zalmaiza here. Our first meeting was attended on Zoom by teams from Karu Kupa, Kumiai, Wukchumni, and Wapo. Zalmai and Matthew were our guest instructors to teach the teams this simple and structured method of learning and using everyday language every day. Carly ran a poll at the end of the meeting to ask how often the teams would like to get together for these mini trainings and the consensus was as often as possible. So we are now having um, meetings every two weeks. The strategies we've been using for our virtual mini training involve tutoring rooms, uh, or I'm sorry, involve turning rooms of the home into a language nest, using Zeke's definition of it as a space where only the tar target language is used. I'm sorry, Zeke is Zalmai's nickname. This is a useful technique since we are all sheltering at home anyway, and in any case, one of our major goals is to bring the language back to the home. We began in the bathroom. Each activity in the bathroom becomes a domain for the language. The teams develop the vocabulary and sentences that go with that domain and post written versions in the space where the activity is performed. Once the domain is posted, the learners try to commit to using the language for that domain, leaving English behind. Carly has made templates for all these domains using her language, Western Mono, and these can be used by the teams to develop the sentences in their own language. Another important strategy that Zeek developed is the use of self-narration. The domains are presented in first-person form. For example, brushing teeth. I get my toothbrush, I, I get the toothpaste, I put toothpaste on the toothbrush, I brush my teeth, I rinse my mouth. We like to make the domains short, but of course the teams can add on more sentences as they get used to the first set. The teams post the sentences for the domain and the location where the activity is performed and speak these sentences every time they do the activity itself. Self-narration is another useful st uh, strategy for COVID. If you're sheltering at home and don't have anyone to use your language with, self-narration allows you to use your language anyway, not just learn it, but use it. 
our biweekly methods, we have mastered the bathroom uh, as a language nest, and we are now deep into the kitchen domains. Our sessions are just an hour long. We begin with checking in with each other, asking how language use and life in general are going. Everyone reports on the domains they've been learning since we last met. Then we assign a new domain or let each group choose one from a list, or now that they're more advanced, even make up their own domain and send them to Zoom breakout rooms to get the sentences together to use for that domain. We bring them back 20 minutes later to discuss what they did and usually have a pretty entertaining session with everyone's discussion of interesting grammatical or semantic issues that come up or how to express a concept they didn't have a word for. We give them a homework assignment, which is usually to master the domain they were just working on or to add at least one more to their repertoire before our next meeting. Our mini trainings are a pleasure to all of us and have really increased the communication we have with our master apprentice teams and families. Getting everyone together for a major training involves a, a big effort of finding a date and a venue, getting hotel reservations, figuring out how to get meals, getting everyone to travel to a place which will always be hundreds of miles away for many. And we can manage these trainings only two times a year usually. The Zoom trainings not only allow more frequent training, but also helps us to understand our teams better and helps keep their motivation up. We look forward to in-person meetings when we're able to do them again, but we expect that we will be doing regular virtual mini trainings way after COVID. Finally, our most recent online event was the California Indian Spoken Word hosted by board member Vincent Medina. And the first one was on September 22nd, uh, which is the first day of fall. The event started with an opening by another board member, Nancy Steele, and continued with a set of lined up speakers who volunteered ahead of time to contribute a song or a story or other sharing of their language. Then we opened the floor for an open mic and let the evening unfold with improvisation. And this is the model that we'll use for future spoken word events as well. And we hosted another over winter solstice on December 21st, and we intend to continue hosting these spoken word events uh, every three months to commemorate the seasons and to create a space for languages to be shared and connections to be made despite long distances. While we miss being together in person, we find one great benefit, the ability to interact much more often and not having to travel to do it. California is a big place and our map trainings demand a great deal of traveling and expense. Teams were on their own between training times, except for occasional calls and site visits from mentors to see how they were doing. Now, for anyone with a smartphone or computer and internet, we can be in touch much more often. We actually think Zoom and online events are here to stay with us even when the pandemic has gone from us. And for now, being able to keep in virtual touch with the people we serve and love is a silver lining to this massive pandemic storm cloud. Thank you. Thank you.